This is a quick introduction to Real-Time CSG, which is a free tool for Unity that helps you prototype levels quickly and easily. I'll start by introducing brushes and how to manipulate them. Then I'll talk about Boolean operators. Finally, I will go through a worked example of building a simple house. Real-Time CSG also handles texturing with Unity materials, but I'll leave that for another video. Please see the description for more information about real-time CSG. You can see the real-time CSG overlay here and here. I can enable and disable it by pressing Ctrl F3. I'm going to go to the Generate tab, I'll leave it on box, I'll click once in the scene, twice in the scene, and I'll drag the handle up to give my box height. I'll press Enter to instantiate the brush. If I would have clicked away, I also would have instantiated the brush. If I would have pressed Escape, the generate action would have been cancelled. Once I've generated a brush, I can go into place mode to move it around like any other Unity object. I would need to be in place mode to select a brush if I haven't already got it selected. I can also rotate a brush, but note that in real time CSG, you need to click and drag on the edge of an object. Note we have a transform here. This is the pivot. If I move it away, you can see that really we're rotating the object around the pivot. We have our position snapping settings here. They work as you would expect, but I'll just demonstrate by changing the angle snapping to 45. Leave it like that. The open and close square bracket buttons on your keyboard will change the position snapping setting. They're an incredibly useful set of hotkeys. Notice that these handles correspond to the unity axes because I'm in global positioning mode. If I change this to local, these axes now correspond to the axes relative to the object. This is useful if you don't want to build objects at 90 degrees to each other. I can duplicate an object by holding D and moving it. I can generate objects without going into the generate mode using hotkeys. For example, if I hold B, I will start generating a box. Notice that I can generate boxes or other brushes on the side of existing brushes. Once I have generated a brush, I can manipulate it by going into the edit mode. In the edit mode, you can directly manipulate faces, edges, vertices, I can also rotate them. That's a weird looking shape. In the clip mode, I can drag a line over my shape to cut it in half or cut it in half and delete one side. In edit mode, I can chamfer edges by holding shift and I can extrude faces also by holding shift. I do need to press enter to instantiate the extrusion. Extrusions are new shapes. Brushes in real time CSG have an operation. They can be an addition, a subtraction, or an intersection. The real time CSG process goes from the top of the hierarchy, working its way down to the bottom, performing subsequent operations. So here, you can see by this icon here that all of these brushes are additions. First we add brush 1, then we add brush 2, and so on. If I change brush 6 to a subtraction, we're now going to subtract this brush from the geometry of the world. If I put this inside of another object, you'll see that working. You can see how quickly we can create interesting geometry. It's really important to understand that this is 
a hierarchical process. If I move this brush to the top, there'll be no brushes that it can subtract from. First we start here and subtract from nothing, and then we add the rest of the brushes. The intersection type is a bit complicated, but I'll give you a demonstration right now. I'll set this brush to an intersection type. Real-time CSG is a bit slow with intersection types, so I'm going to click the refresh button down here to rebuild everything. Everything has disappeared. This is because the intersection type brush is only going to show us geometry exactly where it intersects with other addition brushes. Right now, this brush isn't intersecting with anything, so there's no geometry. If I move it to the left, you can see where it intersects with other existing brushes, we have geometry. But I recommend you work with groups with intersection brushes. We can use groups to organize our brushes and nest operations. I'm going to create a slightly more complex shape by extracting one brush from another. I can create an operation from the right click menu and I'm going to add them as children to this operation. You can see if I click the operation here now, they're grouped together. If I click on an individual brush in the scene, I can still move it on its own. If you want to avoid that, you can tick the handle as one object. Now when I click on one of the brushes, I can move both of them at the same time. The operation has four modes, pass-through, addition, subtraction, and intersection. Pass-through just means the operation acts as a group, and the child brushes will affect the world like normal. So we have this subtraction brush here. If I move the operation down, see it's going to affect the world. The addition mode in an operation means only the positive geometry from the operation is going to affect the world. So note, we have this complex shape here, and we have this subtract that's extruding outwards. Because the operation is in addition mode, only this complex shape is going to interact with the world. If I move this down, we'll see now this subtraction doesn't affect the world. Subtraction and intersection handle similarly. They work just as the subtraction and intersection mode on brushes, except they are relating to this positive shape. If I change this to subtraction, you'll see it's the inverse of the complex shape that I created. And likewise with intersection. I'm going to create a little building now so you can kind of see what the workflow for real-time CSG looks like. I'm not going to worry too much about getting the scale right or making it look perfect. I just want to show you some full manipulation techniques that I use. So I'm going to start off by using the free draw tool for the base of my building. Back at the start, which will allow me to extrude this. I'm going to make the building hollow by making another shape that is the same, just inset a little bit. Extrude it down, which will automatically turn that brush into a subtractive brush. There we go, we can now go inside of our building. I'm going to create an entrance in a second, but first I want to make a slanted roof. So I'm going to use the free draw tool again, and this time I'm going to build on the side of my building, which is so that I don't need to rotate it later. For example, if I built my roof on the floor like this, exactly in the right position. I'll press escape to cancel that. So I'll move this place, brooding this face or pushing this face out and I will duplicate it by holding D. 
rotate it and freeze. I'll put it into. And I'm going to manually edit the edges so I can have them aligned to the grid. We have a little hole here, and this is because uh, sometimes real time CSG has floating point errors. It's the price to pay uh, to have such cool features. So sometimes clicking this refresh button will fix it. Sometimes editing a face just a little bit will fix it. There we go. So that's our roof. It looks kind of cool. Now I am going to show you how to get rid of this extra bit so we can have like a corner that comes in like this. So this is a tool for intersection. So we want this little corner to be the intersection of this roof and this roof. We don't want to take the intersection of both of these brushes because outward bits will disappear. So I'm going to take the clip tool and I'm just going to clip off this little corner. I'll clip off this little corner as well, this one. And I'm going to create an operation. Take both my both my clipped off pieces, add them to the operation, and then I'm going to add second effect. And let's bring it out. There we go, we have our nice corner. Once again, we have this weird plane issue. There we are, a nice little roof. Let's add a door now, and I'm going to make a door that's a little bit more stylish than just a box cut out of a wall. But let's start off with a box cut out of the wall. Now because of the aforementioned floating point errors, I recommend when you're doing subtractions that are going to intersect with a surface like this, always extrude it out a little bit more. Still works this time, but sometimes the face will appear when it shouldn't. Flower door. Let's make a cylinder. Kind of cool. And let's add that to an operation as well. Now, what just happened there? Why was it weird? Well, it's because this operation is an addition operation, but uh, these brushes are subtractions. Really, we want to add these brushes together and then subtract that from the world. And we have our door. And I'm going to click handle as one object, which means I can hold D. I'm going to move this out. Add it as well. I think that looks kind of cool, so hold it there. Cheers for watching.